Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers tonight with Green Acres Pest Control, and this is the Bed Bug Show. Uh, we do this every Friday night uh, live, and I'm here to answer your questions and uh, try to address any problems you may have with bed bugs, spiders, ants, cockroaches, crickets, anything, mice, termites. Uh, basically, I do this show every Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern Time, uh, whatever time zone, you have to do the math because I'm not good with time zones. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, every Friday night at 10 o'clock uh, Eastern Time. And so <coughs> tonight we're going to talk about uh, bed bugs and why they're so hard to get rid of. Um, one of the biggest problems that, and, and just so you know, I do have a Twitter at Green Acres PC. It's right there on the screen. So uh, anytime you have any questions during the week and I'm not live, uh, you're welcome to tweet those questions to at Green Acres PC and I will answer them live on the air. Uh, if you can't catch a live stream, uh, you're welcome to, um, like I said, send your questions there. You can also send your questions via Facebook, also Green Acres PC on Facebook. And you can, uh, and I'm you know, I'm there too. G G Green Acres Pest Control LLC. You can like my Facebook page. And uh, also, I've been tweeting throughout the day about what we're going to talk about tonight. And like I said, tonight we're going to talk about uh, why it's so hard to get rid of bed bugs in the home. And one of the biggest issues with bed bug, uh, like if you're going to try to do it yourself, a lot of people try things like diatomaceous earth. They may try things like, uh, you know, pest control pesticides. Uh, bedlam, different different things uh, on the market that you can buy. Uh, you can go to, um, you know, Walmart, Southern States. Uh, you can go and you can purchase lots of things that claim on the label that they will kill bed bugs. Uh, everybody wants to try to get cash in on uh, the, you know, everybody's got their treatment, everybody's got their solution, and of course it works 100% because that's what every label says. And so a lot of the questions that I get from uh, people that call me, uh, people that tweet me, people send me questions, and they ask me, uh, why is it that I've been fighting these things for months and sometimes even years, and I'm still fighting them, and I can't get rid of them? I've used diatomaceous earth. I've sprayed who knows what in my house, who knows what kind of you know cancers I've given myself with pesticide, which actually is not really that much of a worry. Um, as far as, you know, pesticides causing cancers and things like that. But uh, not as much today as it was, you know, years in the past. But um, anyway, that's that's one of the biggest questions that I get from people is, uh, you know, oh, uh, hey, James, how are you? I'm good. I'm uh, trying to get over a bit of a cold still. It seems like every Friday night I go live and I still have a sniffle or a cough or something. I'll feel great all week long and then come live stream I've got to go like that so hopefully I'll think about it every time I do it and I'll mute my mic so you don't have to hear it but um anyway like I said one of the biggest complaints people have is that they've been fighting bed bugs for a really long time uh, trying to get rid of them uh, doing everything they can themselves and they just don't know where they're going wrong and a lot of times it's not really your fault you may be doing everything in your power to get rid of the bed bugs but there's one thing about bed bugs that's kind of tricky is that they have developed immunity. Now, used to be in the field of pest control, uh, we really only had to deal with uh, pesticide immunities when it came to cockroaches. Because cockroaches can develop immunity to chemicals within 60 to 90 days. And uh, whatever you've been using on them that full 90 day period uh, may actually not kill them anymore after the, that three months. So with bed bugs, what I have found is that uh, they have started to develop immunity to a lot of store-bought insecticides, which makes sense because when you have bugs in your home, the first thing you do is you go out and you buy pesticide and you get whatever is available to you. You know, whatever has bed bugs on the label. If it says, you know, 100% bed bug elimination, a lot of times that's what people buy. So uh, the general public, whatever the general public is able to get their hands on, that's typically what people 
use. Um, they, and so everybody's using the same thing. And so what happens with bugs, when they start developing immunities to pesticides, they, it, it, it usually, the pesticide's been in the market for a while. Typically, the insecticide is given to the uh, pest control applicators, the uh, PMPs or whatever you want to call them, pest control management professionals or whatever. Um, me, you know, people with a license. They get first dibs on the pesticides. Uh, Fipronil was one of those. And you had to, I mean, you didn't have to have a license to buy it, but a lot of the people that would supply it would require a license to sell it to you. Um, and so as those chemicals became more readily available in the market and they started to be sold at places like Walmart, uh, Southern States, um, uh, Home Depot, now you can get it at Family Dollar, you can get uh, roach bait that has fipronil in it. Um, the roaches have developed, they're almost completely immune to fipronil, which uh, the active ingredient in Max Force gel baits, um, a, uh, Termidor, uh, which is a, in, a termiticide, uh, is fipronil. And so as the market gets more and more saturated with this common, now, now it's a, it was a rare chemical, now it's a very common chemical, the bugs start to develop immunity. And it works the same way with bed bugs. Bed bugs develop immunity to pesticides too. So what will happen is no matter what the label says, whatever name brand it is, you really have to look after the active ingredient in your pesticide. So if you're applying something like um, home defense, let's just to throw that name out there. I'm not sure if it's labeled for inside or bed bugs or anything, but let's just use that as an example. And then you notice that on the label that you start, you switch and you start using something like uh, Bear Advantage or something. I think that might be home defense as well, but I'm not sure. But anyway, you start using another name brand chemical and you look at the active ingredient and you realize you're using the exact same thing. It just has a different label. And that's why you're not able to kill your bed bugs. So you want to try to circulate your chemicals much like you do with cockroaches. If you're finding that whatever you're using, if you're going back month after month, okay, and, and this is for pest control professionals and also, uh, you know, homeowners that want to try to do it themselves. If you notice that you're spraying and the chemical, all right, your bugs aren't dying. So what happens is, is and, and this is if you're not noticing a reduction. Now, what I've noticed a lot in what I do when I go to a home, you may still have bed bugs after the first treatment. You go back for like a second treatment, and there's still bed bugs there, but there, there's less. That's a good thing. That doesn't necessarily mean they're immune to the chemical. It just it's, it's taking its time. It normally does take time when you use liquid insecticide to kill bed bugs. So you're noticing a reduction. You go back the following month, and you still notice a reduction. It means that you're slowly getting rid of the problem. They're not immune. But what bed bugs typically do is they will hide inside the wall voids. They will hide inside box springs, places that you can't really get to them. They'll hide in appliances and uh, or appliances, however you say it. <laughs> I can't talk tonight. But, um, yeah, they'll hide in appliances. They'll hide in, uh, you know, lots of places you just can't get insecticide to. And so you're waiting on them to come out. And if so that's normal to, sl to you know, slowly eliminate the problem it, they, you don't always get rid of them with one or two treatments sometimes it takes three four or five treatments it just depends on how hungry the bed bugs are how apt they are to come out and bite you and crawl through the chemical they don't always do it if they can sense that there's a pesticide there if you're using like a repellent they're not going to want to crawl out and go through it and so you're really trying to starve them out it's like they're under siege and so they have to come out eventually and when they do then they die and so that's the slow progression of eliminating bed bugs, and that's normal. So don't get frustrated if you're, like I said, if you're dealing with them month after month, as long as you continue to see a reduction. Now, you would want to get a little frustrated if you're not seeing any reduction at all, and actually their numbers are climbing. Because if that's happening, that means that the chemical you're using is not killing the bed bugs. You're not getting rid of the problem. And uh, as Frugal Landlord points out, you want to treat every nook, every crack, every crevice, every corner. That's absolutely right. You want to be, if you have to ask, do I need to treat that crack? There's no question. Treat it. Always do it. 
but there is an instance where you're treating every crack, you're treating every crevice, you're being very thorough, you're doing everything right, but your bed bugs aren't dying. If they're not dying, it's because they're immune to what you're using. It means that you're you might as well be bathing them. You're not hurting them. You're not you're not killing them. So then you want to look at your active ingredient and you want to try to switch and use a different chemical. Um, one of the one pesticides that I actually advise people buy that I always tell people you need to go and use if you're going to get rid of the bed bugs yourself is Crossfire. And the reason I like to promote Crossfire, and I say this on a lot of my videos, is because Crossfire is it's a um, it's a neonicotinoid, and I have yet to run into any immunity issues. Now, I have had people tell me that it doesn't work as quickly as they would like. And I have noticed in my own treatments with Crossfire that it doesn't work as quickly as I would like, but it does do the job. So <coughs> if you're wanting like a quick knockdown, you may be better off using something like, um, like Alpine WSG. Uh, that will last, I mean, that will last as long as Crossfire, but it's also, it's got other ingredients in it that will do like a quicker knockdown, and so you might want to try using something like that. Um, I've yet to find any immunity issues with Alpine or Crossfire. That doesn't mean it's not going to be that way in the future, but that's what I recommend. So, and the reason I recommend those two chemicals as like my top two chemicals to go to to treat for bed bugs is because they are very safe for mammals. Uh, they've yet to be able to find any connection, really. I mean, unless anybody here knows any better, uh, you know, any advice or anything like that as far as, you know, safety for mammals, I was under the impression that it's actually very safe, um, that it hasn't had any, any uh, it doesn't actually even attack a part of the nervous system that mammals even produce, that they even have. So you're not going to have to worry about, you know, poisoning yourself with Crossfire or Alpine. You still don't want to drench your beds. You don't want to weigh on wet, lay on wet chemical or, you know, intentionally, you know, treat yourself with the pesticide. You, you still want to be really safe using the pesticide. But um, either way, you know, you can treat actual beds. Now, you can't treat mattresses with Alpine. They do specifically say on the label not to be used on the mattress, but you can treat box springs. Now, Crossfire will allow you to treat, <coughs> excuse me, Crossfire will allow you to treat the mattress and the box spring. So you, like, to give you an example, a job that I just did for bed bugs, uh, they have a problem where the bed bugs are actually getting on the mattress, where they were getting on the mattress itself. If I had used Alpine, that would have caused a lot of problems because I wouldn't actually be able to treat the mattress with Alpine. But because I use Crossfire, I'm able to go in and actually treat the entire mattress and kill those live bed bugs that are living on the mattress itself. Bed bugs don't always live on the mattress. In fact, most of the time I find that they don't live on the mattress. They might be in the seams, but they typically aren't. They're usually between the mattress and the box spring. And if you treat the box spring, you're going to kill your problem. You're going to take care of your infestation. So Vendetta, Vendetta is a bait. Are you talking if you're Don, if you're talking about cockroaches, um, I have yet to run into real immunities with Vendetta. Uh, Vendetta has Nygard, which is a um, a growth regulator, and I have not or yeah, yeah, an IGR. Um, I haven't had any problems with immunity yet, but just like with any bait with roaches, I honestly believe that roaches build immunity faster than any other bug I have to deal with, even bed bugs. Um, it took years for bed bugs to actually develop immunities to a lot of the chemicals we've been using for, you know, 40, 50, even 60 years. Um, the bed bugs just take forever to develop immunity, but they also breed a lot slower than roaches, like German cockroaches. German cockroaches can breed 16 to 28 days. It just depends on the temperatures and the environment. So you breed roaches so quickly that they can develop immunity extremely quickly. Hold on just a minute. I have to cough. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> um, bedlam. Um, let's take a cough drop. Put a cough drop in. Let me look up bedlam. If I remember correctly, bedlam. Oh. Give me the label, man. Oh, it's MGK. 
I don't know, it might work. That's who makes Crossfire. Okay. Bedlam. Are you now are you talking about the now, Cameron, you'll you'll have to explain to me. Are you are you uh talking about the aerosol? Is there a liquid? Um it looks like um it probably would kill bed bugs. Uh, kills bed bugs and their eggs, which means bed bugs and eggs while they're still in their belly. Will not stain water safe fabrics or surfaces. Kills bed bugs on wood, ceramic surfaces, and carpet for up to two weeks. Oh, it only has a two week residual. Yeah, I probably wouldn't ever use that. And the reason I would not use it is because it only has a two week residual. Crossfire has 30 day residual. And so, even though, I mean, the same company makes Bedlam that makes Crossfire. And so, I would rather just buy Crossfire. Um, the crossfire is going to last 30 days. It says right on the label that it, that it has a residual for up to 30 days. And I don't want to have to go back to somebody's house every two weeks. I want to make it look like I'm doing my job, you know, that I don't have to come back every two weeks to do even more treatment. And I'd have to charge more to do that. Now, I don't mind if it t ends up that I have to, that that's the only way I'm going to be able to get rid of bed bugs is I'm going to have to do a two-week follow-up every time that I do bed bugs. Then that's what I'll have to do. But for the time being, I'm not having to do that yet. I have not, I mean... In 30 years almost, I've, I've never had to go back on bed bugs more than once a month. And uh, so that's all I ever do. That's that's what I do now. But like I said, Bedlam is saying that it's up to two weeks that it will kill bed bugs. And so, you know, I mean, I guess if you're really, really thorough, maybe. But um, I probably wouldn't. I'd probably still go with Crossfire because it'll kill them too. And it'll kill them for 30 days, which is, you know, four, four and a half weeks. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, let's see here. Bedlam. Let's see if I can get the liquid, if you can. Because it looks like it's only an aerosol, if it's only an aerosol. Uh, <coughs> it is a chemical. Yeah, it's just an aerosol can. So I probably wouldn't use it at all. Um, I have found that the crossfire, for I have talked to several people about um other exterminators about crossfire and now crossfire produces a it's a um a liquid insecticide for bed bugs and they also have a aerosol just like bedlam and i've had people tell me that the aerosol doesn't work but also an aerosol is only going to put out a very small amount of active ingredient it's not going to be a lot of, of product. So personally, I don't use the aerosol. I feel like I do better with something like a BNG, a, like a, a gallon spray tank, and I treat with a BNG, and I can get the chemical where I need it to go and actually have the amount that's needed to do the job and last. I feel like probably the biggest reason a lot of people are having problems with the Crossfire aerosol is it just doesn't last long enough. The thing about Crossfire and the reason that I believe, and this is actually what scientists have claimed too, from what I've talked to people when I go to get my license renewed and stuff, people, the salesmen, the people that want to sell you the, the insecticide, from talking to them directly, they said the reason that they believe that Crossfire has been so effective to get rid of bed bugs is because it's 13 ounces to a gallon. Now, to put that in perspective, because a lot of people don't understand mix ratios, um, 13 ounces to a gallon. That's a lot of active ingredient in your gallon of water. Um, typically, if you're going to mix something like demon, for example, which is cypermethrin, and now it's a synthetic pyrethroid, if you're going to kill German roaches for a clean out, which is double strength to get rid of German cockroaches, it's one ounce. Typically, to get rid of spiders, ants, crickets, silverfish, you know, any other bug, it's a half ounce to a gallon. That's why scientists believe that they're having such good results with Crossfire is because of the th it's 13 ounces of Crossfire active ingredient to one gallon of water. So it's just really, really, really strong. And it's what, but it's like I said, it's strong, but it still only lasts 30 days. So, you know, it's, it's strong, mixed strong, but it breaks down really quickly. Um, and they're not having any problems with adverse effects with pets. They're not having problems with people. 
They're not having problems in any lab results. As far as the LD50 value, you don't have to wear gloves when you mix it. It's extremely safe. And that's the one time that you're going to be poisoned if you're, you know, is when you're mixing insecticide. That's when they tell you you have to be the safest. It's when you have to wear goggles. You have to wear maybe even a face mask, gloves, long sleeve shirts, um, just in case when you're when you're mixing any any of the concentrate were to actually splash back get on your skin. You don't want it to come in contact with your skin. That's when they tell you on the label. Most labels are the most strict. Is when you're mixing, and they'll tell you you need to wear gloves, uh, goggles, and all kinds of like I said, all kinds of of safety equipment in order to keep yourself from becoming uh, poisoned. And with Crossfire, there's there's nothing like that on the label at all. In fact, there's not even a signal word on the label, which is like warning, danger, caution. Uh, there's no signal word, dan uh, nothing like that at all on, on the label of Crossfire. Now, I'll look that up just to make sure, but there didn't used to be. Because I don't want to say that and then be wrong. But um, I'm pretty sure that it still says the same thing that it always says. And I can share this with you guys. This is a Crossfire label. Um, see, it kills bed bugs and bed bugs. See, they claim the bed bug eggs too. Um, hold on a minute. I'll, I'll get to your question in just a minute there, James. <laughs> hold on. I got a cough again. I, I feel it coming. Sorry. All right. So. Let's see. It says low odor, which I don't ever smell it. The people have actually, when I'm done using Crossfire, they act like I have never even been there. They can't even smell it at all. Um, see, there's there's nothing on the label now. Normally, it would say right on the front, right on the very front of the label, um, whether it was like warning, caution. Wow, this label is not very good, is it? Look at that. It's kind of messed up, isn't it? Discard clothing um, that's been drenched heavily, so you can't can't treat you know clothing or anything like that. Yeah, see, there's nothing on here at all. This now it tells you what not to do. Like this product is used not for use on humans or animals, so don't treat yourself. Uh, don't treat your pets. You know that's not what it's for. It's for bed bugs. Um, and it's it, there's no like like I said, if it was a w any kind of uh, warning, it always puts it right up here. And it'll put like warning, like where it says keep out of reach of children. It'll say warning, caution, whatever. And that's how you can tell the toxicity of the chemical is based on the signal word. And there is no signal word on this chemical. Um, so while, while I've got this up and while I'm sharing, see MGK makes it right here. Manufactured by MGK, which is the same people that make Bedlam. All right, so let's see here. What is this? Is it a pesticide? It's an aerosol? Aerosol. I can't spell. Congratulations, Greg. That's great. Okay, so... I don't know what this is, James. If you can provide me with a link, it's going to be kind of hard to get the link in the chat because I don't allow for links to be posted in chat. So you're going to have to post it and maybe put some spaces or something in it so that I can see it. And I'll go take a look because I can't find it. Um, not easily anyway. Um, and I don't want to spend the whole episode trying to find this. I see, see it's like syrup or something. It looks like there's a something you can take orally. My feet are cold. I am not wearing socks, and I should be. <laughs> Just to share that with you guys. Looks like my labels are not, it's not working right for some reason. Like, that is weird why my computer is doing that today. Maybe it's because I've got it running this uh, incognito mode. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is, James. I'm sorry, I can't answer your question. I'm not really sure what that is. So, I can't help you. But I wish I could. 
but if I figure anything out between now and next Friday, I'll be sure to post it on my Twitter. If you guys want, you can follow me on Twitter. It's at GreenAcresPC, which I will post that in the chat. That's my Twitter handle. If you want, you can follow me there and tweet me if you want any questions or anything like that between episodes from Friday to Friday. I know that I only do this once a week live um, with my live stream. And so if there's any questions at all you have between now and next Friday, you're uh, more than welcome to ask me any questions on Twitter. I got to mute the thing again. You can either ask me on Twitter or you can ask me on Facebook, which my Facebook is uh, Green Acres Pest Control LLC. So if you um, actually let me go ahead and uh, see if I can find that for you. Um, <coughs> actually, the easy I'll tell you, I'll show you the easiest way to do this. Let me show you the easiest way to do this. GreenAcresPC.com. I have got links. Let me see if I can show you here. Up here at the top. Right there. See, I've got Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, and Reddit, where I answer questions on Reddit. I also have Patreon. Now, Patreon is something I just started last week. Um, and anything, anytime I get a patron or uh, anything I make from YouTube as far as my monetization, any money that comes in from YouTube or anything that comes in from uh, donations through, uh, through PayPal or anything like that, I take all of that money and I use it to help people that can't afford pest control for bed bugs. And so I go out and I'll treat their home at, uh, I take all the money, whatever I've made towards YouTube or whatever, I put that in a separate account. And then I'll take that and put it towards lower income families so I can help people get rid of their bed bugs. And so that's what the patron's for. That's why it's up there. But um, as far as these other links, and I went into that a little bit on my last episode too and talked about it. I don't want to talk about it every episode. But um, yeah, I do have a patron if you want to become a patron. I don't have any patrons right now. Basically, the way it works is it's like a monthly thing. Like you can pledge like a dollar every month or five dollars every month or something like that. And I take anything that comes in through that and I put it towards um, – lower income families so that I can help people get rid of their bed bugs because honestly I think that's the biggest problem with bed bugs is your lower income families cannot afford to treat for them and so they're spreading the problem they're going to the movie theaters they're going to restaurants um, I had a lady this morning that tweeted me a picture uh, it actually didn't tweet me a picture sent me a picture via my cell phone of uh, a bug that she found in her office and she asked me she's like what is this and uh, she's like is it a tick it looks like a tick and I'm like, no, that's a bed bug. And it was in her office uh, where she works. And so evidently somebody has bed bugs in their home and they brought them in and they infested the office building. So now the office building is going to have to be treated for bed bugs. So they're everywhere. And so that's just what I'm trying to do to try to help people using the patron server. But anyway, yeah, if you go to my website at greenacrespc.com, uh, that's got all of my social links at the top. And so you can link, like if you click the Facebook link, it will take you directly to, if it will load, um, yeah, my Facebook page. See, Green Acres Pest Control. And so, you know, you can check me out there. So if you have any questions, like I said, between, between episodes. Um, so Cameron Grimes, so what is the best bait for roaches? Honestly, there's several different baits that I use. Um, it just depends because I use different different baits. Um, Vendetta is good, which was already said earlier uh, by Cam. I, you you said uh, I think it was didn't wasn't it you who uh, who asked about Vendetta? Somebody asked about Vendetta Plus. Ah, Don. Don asked about Vendetta. Vendetta's good. And also there's um, Advion. Those are the only ones I'm using right now. I don't use a lot of bait. I don't depend a lot on bait. But Advion, which is, uh, this is on Amazon here. Well, no image available. What? I saw an image. It said there was an image. Well, this is do my own pest control. So this is what, um, this is, ooh, look at there. Let's sign up. There you go. Advion. That's one that I've used. It works really well. I've had really good results with that. Um, but I have run into, with Advion, immunity issues. 
So that's, I may use Advion at first, and then if I'm having any issues, then I might switch up and start using uh, Vendetta. And so, you know, this is a Syngenta product, and the um, uh, Vendetta is MGK. So just to give you an idea of who, who makes each one of them. But it just depends. You know, if you're using uh, Alpine WSG is really good for roaches. And so if you're doing a really good thorough crack and crevice treatment with roaches, you really don't have to use that much bait. Um, I don't use a lot of bait. I mean, one of those tubes of Advion may last me three or four months. Uh, you don't really need to use all that much. After my stint with them, anything, this is from Brooke Ashley, um, anything I buy from thrift stores goes right into the dryer, high heat, even before I wash it. So far, so good. Good. That's with clothes. Be very careful with clothing, sheets, comforters, anything that comes off a bed. Just, it's better not to buy it. But, um, yeah, as far as any clothing, any sheets, comforters, uh, anything that you're going to wear, you definitely want to wash them and dry them and keep that stuff away from, uh, you know, don't wear it. If you really have to be thrifty and you want to buy, like, thrift clothes and stuff from Goodwill and places like that, you can bring bed bugs home. Now, Goodwill is usually pretty good about treating their stuff before they just put it out to the general public. But, um, you know, there are some stores I've been in where they don't. So, you know, keep that in mind if you're dealing with bed bugs. I have Max Force is all right, but that's, like I said, that's a fipronil bait. Um, let me see. Let me make sure. And that they haven't changed their active ingredient. I quit using Max Force like three years ago because I was running into so many problems with uh, immunity here that uh, I quit. I quit using it. Uh, this is this one right here, right? This is on Do My Own Pest Control as well. Right here. This is the uh, Max Force FC Select. This is what you were talking about. Um, like I said, I was having a really good result, but that is fipronil again. That's the active ingredient. I can read that. I can tell it's fipronil. But um, I was having a lot of problems with immunities with German cockroaches to fipronil. So I quit using it. I quit buying it. I went through a whole box, and I wasn't having any results. So I quit using it. But you guys can let me know. I mean, if it's working for you, maybe they've changed. Maybe, maybe it just wasn't palatable enough. Um, maybe they've added more active ingredient. I don't know. But, um, oh, yeah, Alpine. Alpine's just a good product all around. But like I said, I use the Alpine spray, and I use Alpine dust. And so it's the same ingredient in Alpine bait. So I just use like the dust and the liquid. And I feel like you're kind of overkill with the ingredient. I like to use, when I do a roach clean out, I like to do three or four different things. So a lot of times in my duster, I may have boric acid. And then I may have Alpine in my BNG mixed with like an IGR. And then that way I've got three different, three different things there. And then my bait, I'll use something like Advion. Or Vendetta. That way, I'm using something completely different. I've got three or four or five different things, and the likeliness that the roaches are immune to five different chemicals is pretty slim. The, act, the, the, the fact that they may be immune to one is pretty high. They're not going to be immune to boric acid, so you can always fall back and use boric acid dust um, to help if you're having problems with immunity issues um, between visits. And so I try to use boric acid. You can also use FC granules. They're really really good too um if i can spell yeah premise is it premise i can't remember what it is now i haven't used them in a while i haven't bought any more i'm out i can't remember what's in them let's see if it's premise that's that's not too bad but i thought that was only for termites yeah, that's not that's not it. Um, I'm I don't know what to search for. It's but anyway, the active ingredient I thought was boric acid. Well, anyway, we won't waste time looking that up. But um, they're effective anyway. They they work they work really well. But yeah, boric acid, diatomaceous earth, things like that you could use uh, in your duster to help combat uh, chemical immunities. Um, also, you can use uh, one thing that helps a lot. If since we're on the uh, subject of immunity issues, now this is expensive, but Zenprox. Zenprox is kind of like a catalyst 
where it will um, make your pesticide work really well. I've had really good results with this when you run into chemical immunities with bed bugs and cockroaches, which they're both on the label. Um, bed bugs right there and cockroaches right there. And this is really effective. And you typically add this with another pesticide. It does have pyobranyl butoxide in it, but it's also got whatever that is. So I don't, I don't try to pronounce them. I'm just showing you these are the chemicals that are in Zenprox. That's a pretty effective additive. It's you treat it like an IGR. In fact, the label, if you read the label of Zenprox, it's very similar to that of an IGR. They pretty much, they expect that you're going to mix it with something, and it's very effective. But you need to watch your labels, because if you're using it for bed bugs, you cannot use Zenprox on mattresses, where you can use Crossfire on mattresses. So if you're going to treat a mattress with something like Crossfire, don't put Zenprox in it. And then you just use Crossfire. And I wouldn't mix anything with Crossfire anyway because it's already like three or four different chemicals in it. And there's no reason to add any more to it. And I've, I've been, like I said, I've been getting really good results with Crossfire on its, by itself. And I don't think Zimprox is labeled to be added to Crossfire either. But you have to read the label. Like I said, it's pretty expensive. Like fifty two twenty eight for that little bottle. It's like a pint. Was it a pint? 16 ounces. Yep, one pint, 16 ounces. So, you know, like I said, it's pretty expensive. But it's really good. It's a good additive. It helps with uh, roaches and bed bugs. So, <coughs> so I hope I've answered anybody's questions. I hope I've gone over what I needed to tonight. I really wanted to um, talk about. Uh, I wanted to to go over why people. You know, there's no reason to really be. Um, don't get in a rush to get rid of your bed bugs. Don't get. Um, you know, yes, it does take a little little while. Every now and then, you, you get somebody that says, oh, yeah, it took me only one treatment, and I got rid of them with one shot. That's not the norm. Usually it takes two treatments, sometimes three, maybe even four treatments to get rid of bed bugs. And it's, and it's mainly like I was saying before. It has to do a lot with the, um, the way in which bed bugs reproduce and the, the, <coughs> the hatch rate of their eggs. I'm sorry. I'm, I am trying to deal with this cough the best I can. I'm trying not to cough in the mic. But uh, the – let me see. I wonder if I can mute it here. Oh, yeah, that's better. All right, so anyway, with um, – with, with, uh, you need to understand that it does take time. Don't expect to get rid of them right away. I know there's a lot of exterminators out there that like to preach that you can get rid of them with one treatment, with something like a heat treatment. Um, there are exterminators that get rid of bed bugs with heat treatments. I'm not going to say heat treatments never work, but heat treatments don't work a lot of the times. So <laughs> there are times that heat treatments do work, but I'm one of these people that I think it should work all the time. If it doesn't work all the time, don't waste your time. Um, that's how I feel about it, even if you might get lucky and it might work. It's still, to me, not worth the extra expense. Um it's pretty expensive to deal with bed bugs, and it's just that much more expensive to do a heat treatment. And so I feel like it's better to do a liquid application rather than a heat treatment. Even people that do heat treatments, that they used to do heat treatments alone, are doing heat treatments with chemical application. As if to admit that the heat treatment is not going to get rid of 100% of the problem, the liquid is going to help get rid of those ones that are still held up in the wall that have to come out to get to you to bite you. So understand that uh, things have changed in almost two years since I started this channel with a heat anti-heat treatment video, that uh, exterminators have started changing the way that they treat with heat treatments. And some exterminators were changing back that far ago, almost two years ago. When heat treatment machines first came out, the biggest thing was we're going green, you don't have to use insecticide, get insecticide out of the market, we're going to just do heat, it's going to kill your bed bugs, it's going to be great. And it sounds really good, and it was working for some people. And the people it helped, great. But the people it didn't were really irritated. And so those are the people that I helped, that I went to, and I was helping here in Central to Southern Virginia get rid of their bed bug problems back years ago. And so just so you know, um, there are people that still swear by heat treatments. If it's working for you, then go for it. I don't, I don't support them. Have every, oh, yeah, I've used Borcare. 
Boric hair is something that you use really mainly for ten uh like like uh uh it's it's a boric acid treatment for lumber for termites. Now I haven't used it anything for other than like termites or powder post beetles, wood bores, things like that. That's the only thing I use boric hair for. Boric hair, timbor, um what's another one? Uh, there's, there's three. Uh, the timbor and the boric hair are the most the most famous. Stuff's amazing, though. Once treated uh, termites, and uh, with some timbor, it, it was some. It was timbor. It wasn't actually boric care, but they're very similar. Very similar, and uh, the termites were just. They just died like slugs. It, like if you were to ever salt a slug, is what it looked like. They just just shriveled up and just died everywhere. But see, the thing about boric acid is, it's a it's a salt type treatment. Um, <clears throat> people used to wash their eyes out with boric acid. You can still get saline solution with boric acid as the active ingredient in it. Uh, in fact, it's funny. I went to the um, pharmacy the other day because I needed to buy boric acid eye drops because my dog had an eye infection, and it's really effective to get rid of mild eye infections. And so I went to go get boric acid eye drops. I said, oh, no, we don't sell those anymore because uh, the boric acid was proven to be harmful for the eye. It was causing crystals to form in the eye. And I said, well, every single eye solution that you have on the shelf has boric acid as the number one ingredient. Every single one of them. No, really? I said, um, yeah. And I pulled them out and I showed her the label. And they all have boric acid. And so it's, it's real common to use that to clean out your eyes. And uh, it's actually, it's a salt treatment. It's a saline, which is salt, type treatment. So when you put it on termites, because termites have skin, they don't have an exoskeleton, they have a skin, it just shrivels them up and kills them like right away. So it's really effective on termites. Um, yeah, and it, it, it does it does help a lot, Greg. Uh, Greg's uh, talking about uh, using it with heavy Harvey flooding, Hurricane Harvey. Um, it's really effective for mold, too. Uh, boric hair and timbor are both really good for mold. The mold can't grow on the lumber. So you can treat the open wall voids, you can treat the, the beams, you can treat rafters and stuff with it. And what it does is it keeps the mold from growing in the damaged lumber. So you don't have to worry if it gets wet or anything. Well, you don't want it to get wet. If it gets wet, it's boric hair and timbor are designed to go to the wettest part of the wood. So sodium borates, it's basically it's a sodium borate type chemical. And so what it does is it is it works its way towards the dampest part of the wood, so it keeps mold and things like that out of the wood. It's really effective for that. I've used it for stuff like that before. I can't remember if it was timber or boric hair. It's been years. Um, I don't get very many calls on uh, you know mold, but I get a lot of calls on things like termites. Um, every now and then, powder post beetles, if people understand what they are, a lot of times people don't know what even powder post beetles are. And usually if it's a powder post beetle infestation, it's typically in a barn and people don't care if it's in a barn. A lot of times these old barns you see over on the side of the road that have fallen half over, uh, powder post beetles do that. They're the ones that do that type of damage. Termites might be helping, but the powder post beetles do a lot of damage to old barns out here in Southern Virginia. So... But, uh, but yeah, boric hair is a good chemical. It's really good, and so is uh, Timbor. I was actually using both of those when uh, they took Durazban off the market for termite treatments, and it was, a little while <coughs> it was a little while after that, and you couldn't use Termidor for pretreats. You could use it for active infestation, but you couldn't use it for a pretreat. And uh, so we were, <coughs> we were using a lot of Timbor and Termidor, and, uh, boric hair to treat the lumber that were used to, to build houses because that way you, at least you can treat them with something that's going to kill the termites if the termites try to get in that's going to last for a little while i mean timbor and boric hair both will last forever as long as they don't get wet so uh they're really effective to keep termites out if it's if it's really well treated you know you don't have to worry about termites ever getting in it and so we were using that a lot and uh, we still do that a lot with the vans and stuff you know with the uh with a uh, post construct pre construction, you could treat the band to try to help, but we do a lot of the uh, you know uh, termidor application to the soil, uh, rod treatments and, and uh, trenching and things like that.
I've been told when treating for carpenter bees, results can't be seen until the next season. That's true. That's true, Cameron. Actually, um, it can take several years to get rid of carpenter bees. And the reason that is, is because carpenter bees are generational. So what happens, carpenter bees come to your home and they're like, oh, this is great. I can drill into this piece of lumber and I'll lay my eggs. So the female drills into the wood. She lays her eggs in the wood. Next year, after the, those babies hatch out that year and they fly out, they become carpenter bees, they fly away. They come back to the same house the next year and they drill new holes. So you'll have two generations now are drilling the same house and then three generations and then four and so forth and so on. And so eventually the house will be completely riddled with carpenter bee holes. So the only way that you can get rid of carpenter bees is to treat um, every spring when they're breeding, when they're reproducing. If you treat every spring and you catch them during the reproductive cycle, within two to three years, you can completely eliminate carpenter bees. I have had log homes that you would not think you'd ever be able to get rid of the carpenter bees because they were just everywhere. They love the facial boards. Um, I've seen them where they've actually drilled holes all the way through solid wooden doors into the inside like a peak hole, you know, all the way through the door. Um, so I've had um, really good results treating them in the spring. Typically April is the best time to catch them. And then you, you can do them in the fall too, and then you're catching them when they're hatching out. But that's really hard to judge because not every egg is going to hatch on the same cycle. Not every egg was laid at the same time. It's easier to kill the reproductives when they're laying the eggs than it is to kill the uh, babies when they hatch out. And so what you're doing is you're eliminating the problem uh, before it really becomes a problem. And then next year you just come back. You just have to explain to your customer or understand yourself if you're doing it yourself that you're going to have to do it year after year. and I wouldn't even worry too much about caulking the holes until after September, October. So if you treat in April, May, then you want to caulk them after like October, towards the end of the year. That way, you're not worrying about new bees, that means, well, the new bees, the offspring that are going to be hatching out, drilling their way back out, because they'll just eat their way back out. They're, you're not going to be able to seal them in there and keep them in there. They're just going to drill new holes. And so it's better to wait until after the reproductive cycle is completely over. And then, and like I said, this is based on where you live because the reproductive cycle is different depending on where you live. If you live somewhere further north where it's colder, they're going to, of course, start a little bit later in the year. And if you live further south where it's warmer, you may have a earlier, uh, you know, reproductive cycle. And so you just want to just check and, and just pay attention. If you've got carpenter bees, you know what they're dealing with, how often you deal with them. And then just seal them up at the end of the year before the beginning of the next season when you have to treat again. And that way it limits the holes and you can tell which holes are active and which ones aren't. But um, I've seen bees, what I've seen, Greg, I've actually seen the carpenter bees just drill. Because what will happen, the female goes in, she drills a little hole, she turns 90 degrees and she drills with the grain. And she can drill as deep as six feet down, that one long board. So what happens is she'll drill those, she'll make those little cavities, and she'll lay her eggs in there. And then if that bee can't get back out the original hole, they'll just drill a brand new hole right beside it. I've actually seen people go back and caulk around the hole, and the bee doesn't actually drill out the caulk. They'll just drill a hole right beside the caulk and come right back out. And they'll be coming out of the hole when I go there to treat for the carpenter bees. I've seen it. I can't tell you how many times I've seen the babies coming out of the holes where they've just eaten their way back out again. It's not that hard for, I mean, that's what they're designed to do. The carpenter bees are designed to drill wood. They can drill their way back out. It's not like you're not taking the tool away from them. They're born with it, so they can easily get back out. And, uh, but yeah, I, I like the idea of using something a little more better than silicone. I just, I like silicone because usually you can get something that will match the wood tone better. Um, you can get brown silicones and stuff, which typically with carpenter bees, they prefer cedar and usually if you use a brown silicone, it at least will blend in a little bit. Uh, you could use wood putty and stuff like that, too. Um, the bees are going to be able to drill the wood putty out a lot easier than silicone. And uh, silicone's not that hard for them to drill out either. So, you know, that's why it's important to don't waste your time patching the holes uh, until after you know that you've, you've really, you know, serviced the area really well and you've gotten rid of most of your reproductives. And then you can go through and silicone the holes. And the next year when you come back and treat again, 
you'll notice the holes have reduced in number a lot. And so that that way it kind of helps you. And now I don't I don't personally seal holes myself. Um, I've actually considered it, doing it as like a follow up treatment for my customers. You know, coming back out and doing it again. But it's just so much getting on the ladder, and it would be I would have to charge. And I feel like it's better to let the customer do it because if the customer knows when the bees have come out because they live there, it's better for them to do it themselves. So I just let them handle it. Um, I mean, I'm sure if someone asked me to, I would. Uh, but like I said, it's it's not something I typically charge for. I try to just save my customers money where I can. Um, Jason, what kind of ant bait do you recommend? Mixing with peanut butter? Thanks from Washington. Um, I actually have a video. I think you commented on it, if I remember, um, on making homemade ant bait uh, with sugar. Um, sugar, water, and boric acid. It's on my channel. If you go through and look on my channel, you can find it. It was just posted, I think, last week or the week before, um, on Wednesday, I think it was. I may, it may not have gone live yet. Have it, has it gone live? Maybe it hasn't. Let's see. I've got one coming if it hasn't gone live yet, but I thought it had. I'm pretty sure it had. Yeah, it did, because that other guy, yeah, it did. I have a, another, um, Anno Ali, he, he posts a lot on my videos. And he said that it's good because it's coming up on ant season. Because we are coming right into ant season right now. But that's effective. Basically, it's like taro. A lot of people love to use taro to kill ants. It's a really effective ant bait. And the only reason it's effective is because it's sugar water and boric acid. Boric acid, if you get the bait mixed right to where the ants will take it and they'll eat it or they'll... <laughs> they'll feed it to the reproductives. It's going to work a little bit. You know, it is going to work. The trick is getting them to eat it, getting them to take it and eat it. Ants a lot of times realize that it's poison, and they will not actually feed. If they don't feed it to the reproductives, and the rep then the reproductives don't die. The reproductives, ants, worker ants eat, and I talked about this on my last week too. Worker ants eat reproductive ant poop they don't eat what they pick up so if you see ants teeming all in like a dish of like ant bait like um, boric acid ant bait like what i made on my channel they're not the ones that are eating that they're taking that back and they're feeding it to baby ants and they're feeding it to reproductives those reproductives are turning around and turning that into something that the workers can actually ingest if it's killing the reproductives, and the reproductives can't pass it through their system to the worker ants, the worker ants realize, whoa, hey, wait, this is poison. I, this is not going to work. Where did we get this? And they go back, and they'll actually mark the bait with pheromones to ward the rest of the colony away from it, saying, hey, this is poison. Don't take this. So they've got a new bait, and I still have yet to be able to find this, but um, they've got a new bait out that is really effective for ants and the way it works now I, I've yet to I, I cannot remember what it's called um, but I've heard a lot of good things about it and I wish I could remember the name of it and I'm still haven't I've drawn a blank it's been a whole week and I still can't remember what it's called but there's a bait out now that actually passes through the rectum of the bait or I guess you call it a rectum I don't even know what to call it a rectum or not but um, rectum damn near killed them but anyway <laughs> um, there's an ant bait that actually the, the the workers take back, they feed the reproductives, the reproductives poop it back out, and then the workers eat it, and it kills both. It takes the, the, the reproductive, I think it takes them like four days to die after they ingest it, and that way they can pass it through to the worker ant, and you kill them both. That's the problem with baiting for ants. That's why baiting for ants is not very successful, because most baits don't act that way, and workers are smart enough to save the colony. Liquitox. I have used Liquitox. Um, it is, I don't like it. I've used it once. I don't like it. The reason I don't like it is because when the rodents die, they leave an awful smell and they can smell for weeks. So I don't like it. I, 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 I'm not, it's not something that I enjoy using ever. Uh, people complain. They want you to come back and find it. And you know, if you ever have to go on a retrieval for a dead mouse, you know how hard it is. It's like impossible. And so I'll take another cough drop. So, <laughs> um, <coughs> did you see my video frugal um let me see here
Okay, guys. We're Rhett and Link, and we wanted to show <laughs> That's a loud ad. That's really annoying. Let me post this. This is my link to my ant bait video. This will work. Now, there's one thing. If you read the description below, the, uh, the recipe is actually in the description. Um, and it says that this produces a 2% boric acid ant bait. If this mixture will not work, meaning the ants aren't actually taking it, then you can try mixing it with a quarter teaspoon of boric acid rather than a half a teaspoon of boric acid, and that's going to make a 1% ant bait. So it's going to be less active ingredient, but it's still going to do the job. The point is, is to get the ants to eat it. And if you get the ants to eat it, it's going to kill ants. So that's what I recommend trying that. If you're having a problem with peanut butter, try that. Um, peanut butter is, all right, if they're taking the peanut butter, it depends on what's in the peanut butter. Peanut butter is protein. But it's also sugar. If you've got a sweetened peanut butter and it has sugar in it, then the ants could be coming for carbohydrates or they could be coming for protein. It just depends. I don't have a protein ant bait. This is just the easiest one to explain to people how to make. So this is why I, you know, I, I, I it's really inexpensive. I mean, honestly, you could make enough ant bait to kill, I mean, <laughs> for like a dollar or less. It's, it's really inexpensive because boric acid is dirt cheap. I mean, you could go to Walmart and buy a canister of boric acid. If I had it here, I'd show it to you. But a canister of boric acid um, for, like, less than $4. And so, you know, how much is a bag of sugar? And water comes out the tap. So you can make, I mean, really when you take it and you, and you break it down to actually how much, I mean, you're only having to use, like, half a teaspoon to a quarter teaspoon of boric acid out of, like, a pound. So you're using next to nothing of active ingredient, and you're using hardly any sugar, uh, hardly any water. It's like really, really, really cheap. It's really easy, and that is really successful. And that will actually, I, I've actually got a, a, um, I've got another video that's I haven't actually edited it yet, but I've got one for roach bait, homemade roach bait as well. So if you're interested in being able to kill roaches, um, then I've got one of those going up. Uh, hopefully by Monday, but I can't make any promises. I've had a really hard time. I've had the flu all week, so I haven't really been able to make a lot of videos. Um, I've had a couple backlog videos, so that's why I've had some come out because I made them a couple weeks ago. But um, I've been I've been really struggling on my Roach Mondays. I've got a lot of a lot of editing that needs to be done on those videos to get them up to you, so they're so they're quality. Um, but anyway, yeah, if they're coming for the proteins. Of the of the uh, peanut butter, then that's not going to the the sugar water is not going to kill the uh, the ants. They're not going to want to go to it. Um, it just depends on what the colony needs. If the colony needs proteins, they're going to go for proteins. If they need sugar, they're going to go for sugar. So I would try the sugar mixture because it's so cheap. Give it a shot. If they start taking it, you know they like the sweets. Uh, if they're not taking it, then um, let me know. I'll come up with a protein bait. I have yet to, to make one. I've, this one usually works. If you really need it, you know, it usually works. But let's see. How long have we been up for? I've got a lot of people in. Got 10. Y'all like like and share my uh, video with your friends because it helps the channel a whole lot. Um, it, I, I just thought I'd just throw that in there real quick. <laughs> I usually ask every video, and this is a live stream, so I don't hardly ask on a live stream. But, uh. Because, I don't know, if it's live, I mean, it's live. People can watch it. Um, I do sound all right. You know, I probably should have asked that before. If I sounded all right, if everything come through all right. Because it's uh, kind of hard to tell. I didn't ask. Well, we've been going for about an hour. If there's any other questions, um, don't hesitate to ask, uh, and I can uh, answer it real quick before I log out. I've been out, I've been going for about an hour. I usually try not to go much longer than an hour. Um, that's a pretty good, I think, a pretty good uh, show length for people to be able to rewatch and stuff too. And I try to put in notes and stuff as uh, after the video actually goes live and YouTube does all their stuff that they have to do to get it to go up on the channel. Then uh, usually I'll go in and add little 
links here and there to try to help people so they don't have to watch the whole video. But um, yeah, so if you're uh, if you've got any questions or anything or any other questions about bed bugs or ants or roaches or anything like we've talked about tonight or mice, rats, anything, uh, don't hesitate to ask. Um, I also uh, I've got a couple shows I've done in the past that I go over mice and rats and stuff too. I've got a Mouse Monday that I did. If you're interested in mice, I know it's uh, winter time and a lot of the mice and stuff have been coming in, squirrels uh, and things. And, and so I've got several videos on my channel about that. Uh, I also have some about cockroaches on my Mo Roach Monday that I've been doing. It's a series I've been going on for about since December. But uh, every Monday I try to throw up a, a cockroach video. Oh, no problem, Brooke. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I don't, I don't, um, I, I appreciate it, though, that you like my videos, so, but, uh, anyway, if, uh, I guess if this is gonna be it for everybody, and there's no other questions, then, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night, uh, my kids have been behaving real good, they're both up tonight, it's Friday night, they stayed up tonight, they didn't go to bed early, like they usually do, so, uh, oh, so I was talking to a lady earlier today, and I told her that she's the first one that heard this message, and I thought I'd let everybody know tonight, but uh, apparently, now, she's taken two, so I'm pretty sure that it's positive, but my wife is pregnant with a, with a third, third baby, so we're going to have our third baby here probably due in September, so I thought I'd share that with everybody tonight let you know that we're uh, expecting another baby. Um, it's a, I, I know you're not supposed to tell people before like 16 or 20 weeks or something like that, but and this is probably about eight weeks, and uh, but I'm kind of excited, and so I thought I'd let everybody know. My daughter will be five in, in uh, uh, she'll be five in March. My son just turned 13 back in January, so that's to give you the idea of the gap we put between the kids. So... <laughs> I thought I'd just mention it to everybody. I'm kind of excited about it. But uh, thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. And uh, thought I'd just mention that to everybody. But anyway, I'm excited. So if you guys like the video, uh, like it. Uh, you know, you don't have to share. You know, if you like, that, that's all it really takes, or comment or anything like that. If you have any questions, any, any suggestions or anything like that, don't hesitate to send me a message over on Facebook or uh also, I'm available all the time on uh, Twitter. I try to get back to people as soon as I can, even if you message me on Facebook. I'm usually pretty quick about it, and uh, I always leave my phone open 24 hours. I'm always available for people. If you need to call me there, my website has got my phone number on my website. So you guys have a really great night. I appreciate it. I'm going to head on out and uh, get some rest, and I'll be seeing you guys next week, same time, 10 o'clock, Friday night. Really appreciate it. Thanks.